Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are going to investigate a crucial concept in linear algebra and mathematics that has numerous applications in econometrics, statistics, and Monte Carlo simulations. That is, Galatsky decompositions of square symmetrical positive definite matrices. So let's approach it step by step. Here we have got indeed a square 5 by 5 symmetrical matrix. And uh, we can suspect from the shape of it that that could have been a correlation matrix between five uh, variables and, uh, for example, five different uh, series of stock returns. However, we need not the diagonal elements be ones for the Galatsky decomposition to work. It can be any matrix whatsoever if it's symmetrical, if it's square, and if its determinant is positive. That means it's positive definite. Why is it so important and what Kletsky decomposition is conceptually? Well, in lay people's terms, it is easiest to explain Kletsky decomposition as the extension of the square root operation to matrices. Consider this. If we want to take the square root of 4, we want to find such a non-negative number that this number, when multiplied by itself, squared, gives back the input number. And 2 is the square root of 4, as 2 times 2, 2 squared, does indeed give back 4. For matrices, it's slightly less straightforward, however, the analogy is pretty obvious. We need to find such a matrix D that when multiplied by its transposed matrix, we get back our input matrix A. And there are some requirements that are put onto this Kletsky decomposition matrix, this square root extension in the matrix world, if you wish. And just as we cannot, at least when we're using real numbers, take square roots of negative numbers, we need the determinant of our initial matrix A to be positive. And we can easily verify it by using the term function in Excel and see that the determinant is indeed positive, meaning that we can proceed with our operations. And let's discuss quickly the two formulas we have got over here and the additional restriction we put on the Kletsky decomposition matrices. This restriction is that the elements above the diagonal should be zeros. So all of these elements I'm just highlighting need to be put to zero. And that's the most straightforward uh, procedure we'll do. So let's populate this region of the matrix with zeros. After we've done that, we can proceed to implement the formulas over here. And there are two main formulas. One to figure out the diagonal elements of the decomposition matrix D, and one to find the non-diagonal elements below the diagonal, because obviously those above the diagonal have already been filled with zeros. And that is the algorithm most applications use when factoring or decomposing matrices into its Kolatsky decompositions. First of all, for diagonal elements, as the first element will calculate D11, this one, top left, uh, is a diagonal element, we can apply this formula. It's equal to the square root of the corresponding element of the input matrix minus the squared sum of all elements in the Kolatsky decomposition matrix that are to the left of it. And as here we have got none of those, we can just take the square root of our element in the input matrix, and we get 1. That would be not as straightforward as we figure out the next diagonal elements, as we would have uh, our elements to the left-hand side, so we'll need to subtract their squared sums. Then, for the non-diagonal elements below the diagonal, we need to figure out the following ratio. We again take the uh, corresponding element of the input matrix A and subtract the 
are products of pairs of the new decomposition matrix. However, here in the first column, there are none of those yet calculated. So we can simply divide the initial element, the element of the initial matrix, by the diagonal element of the decomposition matrix that we've just figured out. So we divide it by that and lock the row as this diagonal element corresponds to this column and it stays the same. So we can enforce this formula all the way down and our first column of the Kalatsky decomposition matrix is over and done with. Now let's proceed to the second column. Here we know that we have to apply the first formula, the formula for diagonal elements. And here we need to impose the square root function of the uh, corresponding element of the input matrix A minus the squared sum of all decomposition elements to the left of it. So here we've got this element and nothing else. So we can enforce the formula quite straightforwardly. Next, for the element 3, 2, we need to look at the second formula more closely. Obviously, we'll start with the corresponding element, 3, 2, of the input matrix A, but then we need to subtract. What do we need to subtract? Well, we need to look at this formula more closely. First of all, we need to look at those indices that denote which elements are we going to multiply and then subtract. And we need to move from uh, k equals 1 to k equals j minus 1. And j is the index of our column. And as j is equal to 2 here, we're moving uh, through the second column now, we'll have only one product. And that product would be 3, 1, 2, 1, as we are dealing with element 3, 2. i equals 3, j equals 2. So minus the product of elements 3, 1, and 2, 1, all the new decomposition matrix, divided by the diagonal element in this column of the Kalatsky decomposition matrix. So the element 2, 2 over here. Then for the 4, 2 element, we can move a little bit faster. Start with the corresponding element of the input matrix. Subtract 4, 1, 2, 1, as that's the element 4, 2 of the new matrix. and divide by the respective element at the diagonal. And finally, the 5, 2 element. Well, we start with the 5, 2 element of the original matrix, subtract the product of 5, 1, 2, 1, and divide by the 2, 2 element that is straight at the diagonal of the decomposition matrix. Then we do the 3, 3 element on the diagonal. And again, returning to the first formula, square root of the corresponding element on the diagonal of the input matrix minus all elements to the left of this square. Then we move on to the 4, 3 element. And here, we would actually have j equals 3, so we need to subtract two pairwise products. Let's figure out which. We start with the 4, 3 element of the A matrix and subtract the following. 4, 1, 3, 1 and 4, 2, 3, 2. Easy enough. We see the inherent symmetry of the Kalatsky decomposition operation that would not be obvious if the dimension was smaller. And that's why n equals 5, the fifth dimension, is perhaps the best. It's still simple enough, but you start noticing the underlying structure of the mathematical operation. And obviously now, in the denominator, we have got the corresponding diagonal element, so 0 0.79 d33. And that is our new element. And finally, here we would have 5, 1 times 3, 1 minus 5, 2, 3, 2. And then we divide again by the diagonal element. And we're almost there. For the 4, 4, we start with the square root 
of the 4-4 element of the original matrix and subtract the squared sum of all elements directly to the left of it in the new Kaletsky decomposition matrix. Here we're dealing with the fourth column, so we can start again with the 5-4 element of the original matrix and subtract, as we're dealing with 5-4, three pairs. 5-1 times 4-1, 5, 5-2 times 4-2, and 5-3 times 4-3. Dividing it by the respective diagonal element of the new matrix. And finally, for the 5-5 five, five element, we take the square root of the 5-5 five, five element of the input matrix, minus the squared sum of everything in this row. And that is our Kaletsky decomposition matrix finished. Now to verify that we have indeed achieved what we were looking for, let's quickly find the matrix product, mmult, of our D matrix, the decomposition matrix, and the transposed D matrix. Enforcing this formula using shift control answer shows us that we have exactly obtained the starting input matrix, meaning that we have successfully taken the square root of a matrix. Quite a bit bulkier than taking the square root of a number, but still doable and implementable manually in Excel. And this particular Kaletsky decomposition operation is in high demand in econometrics when decomposing the impact of shocks in a vectoral autoregression, or in Monte Carlo simulations when trying to simulate correlated random variables and estimate a value at risk, for example. And that's all there is for the Kaletsky decomposition in Excel. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm going to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.